So today's video is about integer vocabulary and basics. So what is an integer? An integer is a positive or negative whole number. And what else are we going to learn about in this video? Well, in addition to learning about integers, we're also going to learn about absolute value, opposites, and then how, and how to compare and order integers. So let's first start with a number line. Number lines can either be horizontal, meaning across, or they can be vertical, meaning up and down. But either way, a number line is going to show numbers in order from least to greatest. So you can kind of use zero kind of as your midpoint. So zero, you can, like I said, zero which represents nothing. So zero would kind of be our midpoint on each one of these number lines. And then everything above zero would be a positive number. And then everything below zero is going to be a negative number. And notice how the two sides of zero are kind of like mirror images. So on the if I go one space to the right um, of zero, I have positive one. And if I go one space to the left, I'm at negative one. And then if I go two spaces to the right, I'm at positive two. If I go two spaces to the left, I'm at negative two. So basically, if you're starting at zero and you're counting backwards, you would go from zero to negative one, then negative two, and negative three, and negative four. And then if you're at zero and you're counting forward, it would be just positive one and positive two and positive three, and so on. Um, a vertical number line follows the same things. Zero still kind of being that midpoint, and then everything above zero is a positive number everything below zero is a negative number. And a common place where you see vertical number lines would be on a thermometer. That's a very common place. Or in science class, on beakers. Uh, those are common places where you'll see like a vertical number line. So let's talk about absolute value. Absolute value is the distance a number is from zero. And distance can't be a negative number, so that means absolute value can't be a negative number. Because just think about it, if I asked you, well, how far is it from your house to school? And maybe you get on the bus and maybe the bus, to your, maybe you're 10 miles. You would never, no matter what direction you travel, you're still just traveling 10 miles. You wouldn't say that you traveled negative 10. So you can't travel a negative distance. You can't walk negative feet or anything like that. Distance can't be a negative number. So with that in mind, that means if you're trying to find absolute value, meaning you're trying to figure out how far a number is from zero, your answer won't be a negative number. Now the symbol for absolute value is you're going to see two lines around the number, kind of like the numbers in jail, kind of like the bars. So the symbol for absolute value are two bars around the number. So we have a couple examples down here. First one, we want to find the absolute value of each number. So we want to find the absolute value of 3, meaning we want to know how far is positive 3 from 0. Well, if we count from 3 back to 0, we know that we're 1, 2, 3 spaces from 0, which means that the absolute value of positive 3 is positive 3. Then we want to look at the absolute value of negative 3. Again, we're looking at the distance. How far is negative 3 away from 0? So again, if I'm starting at negative 3, I've got to move 1, 2, 3 spaces. I'm 3 spaces away from 0. And it doesn't matter that I've gone in the other direction because distance can't be negative. So that means that, again, my answer would be positive 3. Then we have negative 5. What is the absolute value of negative 5? Well, that means negative 5 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces from um, 0. So again, my answer would be positive 5. Another important word to know is the word opposites. And opposites are two numbers that are the same distance from zero, but just on opposite sides. So of course you know what opposites are. The opposite of up is down. The opposite of left is right. The opposite of hot is cold. Well, numbers have opposites too. And an opposite of a number is going to be a number that's the same distance from zero, just in the other direction. So I want to know the opposite of six. So if I first look at where 6 is on the number line, 
I see that 6 is here, and I want to know, well, what number is the same distance away from 6? So I know that 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces to the right. So then to get the opposite, I'd have to go 6 spaces the other direction. So I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that gives me negative 6. So that means that the opposite of positive 6 is negative 6. Then the opposite of negative 8. So again, I'm going to see, well, negative 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's 8 spaces to the left of 0. So if I want to know its opposite, I'm going to go 8 spaces to the right. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And again, that tells me that my answer would be positive 8. I hope you're noticing a pattern here. So the opposite of positive 6 is negative 6. The opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. So that means the opposite of positive 67 would be negative, oops, not negative 64. <laughs> it would actually be negative. it would be negative 67. So the opposite of positive 67 is negative 67. And then even if it's a fraction or a decimal, they still have opposites. So the opposite of negative 1 fourth would be positive 1 fourth. So I hope you can see that there's a pattern. The opposite of a negative is a positive. The opposite of a positive is a negative. Another important skill is that you've got to be able to put um, integers in order from least to greatest. Now, as you go up the number line, the numbers get bigger. So basically, as you're moving to the right, the numbers are bigger. And then as you go down the number line, the numbers actually get smaller, which can be a little deceiving because when you get down here to the negative, it would seem that negative 10 would be a much bigger number than negative 1, but in actuality, it's actually a lot smaller. So you have to almost think about negative numbers in the opposite way that you think a positive number. So whatever the answer would be if the um, numbers were positive, then that's going to be the opposite if the numbers are negative. So positive numbers are always bigger than negative numbers. So you might have a positive 1 and then a negative 2,000. Well, as long as it's a positive compared to a negative, the positive will always be a bigger number. And the more negative a number is, the smaller it gets. So the Basically, the bigger the negative number seems, actually the smaller it is. It's kind of, like I said, it's kind of confusing. But once you start looking at some number lines and looking at some examples and basically kind of memorizing the number lines, it does start to make sense. So I want to compare negative 1 to negative 4. I want to know which one is greater. So as I look at this, well, I know negative 1 is here. And I know negative 1 is a little bit closer to 0. And then negative 4 is here. <clears throat> so because negative 4 is a lot further down than negative 1, that means that negative 4 is actually the smaller number. So that means that negative 1 is actually greater than negative 4. So then we want to compare 0 and negative 8. Well, we know 0 is here. And if 0 is here, and negative 8 is all the way down here. Well, we know that negative 8 um, is a lot further down than 0. So that means that 0 is actually greater than negative 8. If you're trying to order from least to greatest, you have to kind of think about it the same way. Again, your negative numbers are going to be your smaller numbers, and your positive numbers are going to be your bigger, num big, bigger numbers. So if I'm looking at this number line, I have negative 7 and positive 9 and positive 5 and negative 2 and I have 0 and I have negative 3. Again, if I'm looking at the numbers that I have, so I've got negative 7 here, then if I find my positive 9, my positive 9 is here, then if I find my positive 5, my positive 5 is here. If I look for my negative 2, negative 2 is here. 
and then zero kind of like that smack dab kind of in the middle and then my negative three is here so if I'm trying to put them in order from least to greatest my smallest number is actually negative seven then it would be negative three then negative two then zero then positive five then positive nine so this would be the order from least to greatest All right, so sometimes you're going to be asked to put numbers in order from least to greatest, and they're going to be in different forms, and sometimes they'll be negative. Just like the last video when you're comparing an order, you have to change everything to a decimal. Even if you've got negatives in there, you still want to change everything to a decimal. So I have negative four and a half. It's already a decimal, so I'm just going to leave it exactly like it is. Then I have seven tenths, already a decimal. I'm going to leave it like it is. Then I have negative two fifths. And I have to change that to a decimal, so I'm going to divide that out and change it to a decimal. And then once I change it to a decimal, it's going to give me four tenths, but because it was negative two fifths, then it will give me negative four tenths. Then I have negative uh, 28%. And again, because this is a negative, I'm still going to change the percent to a decimal by moving the decimal backwards two places is just that now my answer is actually going to be a negative number. And then I have the absolute value of negative three and six tenths. And remember with that absolute value that automatically means that I'm talking about the distance from zero and that means your answer can't be negative. So I have negative three and six tenths but it's the ab absolute value of it so it's just going to be three and six tenths. Then I want to compare these, and I've got one number after the decimal here, one number after the decimal here, one number after the decimal here, two numbers after the decimal here, and then one. And again, we want to have the same number of digits after the decimal to make a better comparison. So that means we've got to add some zeros. Now we can compare them. So now I've got to put them in order from the smallest to the largest. And I'm going to start with my negative numbers so that I know my negative numbers are automatically smaller than my positive numbers. So I have negative four and 50 hundredths, and then I have negative zero and 40 hundredths, and then I have negative zero and 28 hundredths. And keep in mind, what would seem to be the bigger number, if it's a negative, is actually gonna be the smallest number. So it would seem that the negative four and a half <clears throat> would be the bigger number, but because it's negative, it's actually gonna be the smaller number. Then, and then we, of course, you wanna put it back in its original form. And then my next number would be, I'm comparing negative 40 hundredths and negative 28. It would seem that negative 40 hundredths would be the bigger number, but because it's negative, it's actually the smaller number. Excuse me, and that was originally negative 2 fifths. Then I have negative 28 hundredths, and that's gonna be my, my next, which was originally negative 28%. Then I look at my positives, and I have 70 hundredths, and I have 3 and 60 hundredths. So I know 70 hundredths would be my next number, which was originally 7 tenths. And then I know 3 and 60 hundredths is my biggest number, which was originally the absolute value of 3 and 6 tenths. So if I was putting them in order from least to greatest, it would go negative 4 and a half, negative 2 fifths, negative 28 percent, 7 tenths, and the absolute value of negative 3 and 6 tenths. <clears throat> So keep in mind that um, integers are positive and negative whole numbers, and when you are finding the absolute value, it's the distance from zero. And just like before, if you're comparing and ordering, you need to change everything to a decimal first. All right, don't forget to teach to the tiger.